Hello, this is Jacob Fry with Fry Tech IT Services. In this how-to video, I'm going to show you how to use Task Manager's Performance tab to check your hardware and the resources that you're using, as well as how much how much work your hardware is doing for you, as well as the resource monitor, um, which is a really good resource to have and to know how to use. So the way to get to these applications is to get into the Task Manager. You can right click here on your taskbar and go to Task Manager. You can right click on the Start menu, go to Task Manager, or you can just type into your Start menu, Task Manager. Either way, any one of those will get you to it. Those are three ways to get to it, and there's also a shortcut key um, combination that will get you there as well. Um, I just type it in or right click. Most of the time I right click down there, but Anyway, if you go to the performance tab here, this will show you all your different hardware, uh, your disks, your disk, um, your hard drives, and how much utilization you're using, your memory, your CPU, and your Ethernet. Um, these are all all really good res resources to view if you're having hardware issues or you think you're running out of RAM or your processors overworked or anything like that. So currently right now in my system I have a 2.8 gig uh, AMD Athlon X630 processor. It's only doing 23 to 22 percent utilization and, and that's increased from what I normally am at due to this program running. It tells you the speed it's currently running at, the processes, threads, sockets, the cores. You got I got four physical cores and the logical cores. Uh, virtualization is enabled so I can virtualize stuff and the cache levels and the cache sizes and this has only got uh, level two up to a level two cache uh, on this particular processor um, and that's pretty much here if this was maxed out all the time it might mean that my processor is outdated and that I and or that I'm running too many applications uh, a lot of times when I see it maxed out at 100% all the time, it's either on boot up or it's just the processor is not strong enough to keep up with the system. Especially when people are upgrading old XP and Vista machines to Windows 7, 8.1, and 10. Sometimes it's just too much for them. So it's a great way to see um, if your processor is being overloaded. Uh, I'm going to go to the memory section here. This has got a lot of good information in it. it. Tells you your total size and the type of RAM I have. I have the DDR3 RAM um, at 16 gigs. It tells you the speed of the RAM that you're running. Uh, the slots, I have four slots and all four are used. The form factor, it's DIMM, uh, dual inline memory module, and the hardware reserved uh, megabytes. Um, in use right now, I have right around three gigs in use. And I have the 12.9 available, 3.7 out of 32 committed, and this is probably your uh, virtual memory. And here's cached memory, the memory that's cached to be used, 6.7 gigs, uh, page pool and non-page pool. Most of the time you won't need to know much about the committed and paged and all that. These two, the available in use and cache are the big ones. Now a lot of people think that the more RAM you have, the faster your machine's going to be, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, I could have 32 gigs of RAM in here, and right now I'm only using three, so there's no point to have 32. Uh, the reason you'd want a lot of RAM is if you use virtualization tools like VirtualBox down here. I use that uh, to run a server here and there for testing or test desktops, and that will allocate an extra four gigs on top of this, depending on how much you tell it to allocate. Or if you open a lot of apps, so say I open Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Firefox, Outlook, Word, Excel, start opening all these things. Before I had three apps used, and now if I get back to my desktop here, my shortcut keys at work, and I go back to my task manager, right now I've got four gigs used. So I've allocated an entire other gig of RAM, or almost an entire gig, 0.6 gigs of RAM 0.7 just by opening all these applications. So each application allocates it, uh, a certain amount of RAM and the more you open the more it uses. Now I've seen people in the field that have had 20 and 30 Excel file opens and all sorts of stuff and they bust up around the 4 and 5 gig range and even more. So if you're not using that the best thing to do is just close it and, and don't use it. 
and that'll free up your spare memory and that helps out. Um, and the other thing is your disk utilization. If you have a very high disk utilization, you could have a very slow hard drive and it is running maybe SATA 1 speeds um, and your memory and your CPU are outrunning your hard drive. A lot of times you need CPU, your memory, your hard disk, and your video card, which it doesn't show on here, to all be at decent speeds to keep up with each other. Nowadays, the CPU, RAM, and the disk are the main three, and if you're gaming, then your video card needs to be in sync. If you don't have all three of those running at decent speeds, and one's outrunning the other, then that could be a huge bottleneck to your machine. Um, and right here at the disk, my disk is, utilization is very low. I'm running a Samsung SSD 840 EVO 250 gig, and it is a very high speed um, hard drive. It runs at a uh, three and four hundred kilobytes per second reading uh, write speed right now, and the read speed's not doing it because I'm not saving anything to it. But it's very high. Normally, these would be around 80, 70 to 80 if you were using a SATA 2 drive and a little higher with a SATA 3 drive. And this is a SATA 3 solid state. Um, and that would be a SATA 2 and SATA 3 uh, hard, hard disk drive that would be running 75 to 80. So anyway, this is very low. Uh, these are my two platter drives here. Uh, these are one terabyte platters, and they're not doing anything, as you see, because I'm not really writing anything to it. And then here's your Ethernet. This tells you your IP uh, v4 and v6 IP address. The Type uh, your DNS, which is very nice to know. I'm using Comcast.net's DNS, um, and the adapter it's using, and then the family type right here, or the um, the make and model and everything. Your Ethernet, um, and this is my secondary Ethernet, which is my virtual box, which is the virtualized Ethernet. And as you see, it's running on a whole different IP address range. Now, some of this might be over your head, but that's okay. You can look at the basic stuff on here. Is it 100%? Is it not? Uh, is my RAM maxed out? Is my disk utilization maxed out? These are all really good things to look at. And the other thing to look at uh, is the resource monitor. And right down here at the bottom, you see there's resource monitor. If you click on that, this gives you uh, a different overview, a different look at it. Uh, this is a general overview of the CPU, the disk, and the network, and it will tell you read write errors, uh, response times, uh, all sorts of things. There's all sorts of good information here. What services are using, um, high CPU range or high CPU utilization. So if you need to figure out if a certain process is killing your processor or overworking it, you can look at all that through here. And it's very, very good to have. This will also show you each core of your processor over here if you're on the CPU section. And you can tell if a core is being overloaded or not even being used, that might tell you you have a faulty core. So, and then here's the total. Uh, you've got memory. This tells you a lot of the same things with standby and modified if it's in use. A lot of that was the same as if you go to memory here and you highlight right here, it's the same thing. It makes it a little bit easier to see right here. Some of this can get overwhelming but it is very very good to know if you got something eating disk space, memory space, CPU. It can tell you if you have viruses, if you have uh, you know high usage send and receive bits through a, a, a network resource that you don't know what it is. So you can research that and it's very very good ways. It also tells you all your listening ports for your TCP, IP ports, you know UDP, TCP, uh, ports, I mean, not IP, but uh, UDP and uh, TCP ports. Um, I mean, just all sorts of really good ID, uh, really good information in here. So, hopefully, this was a inf informative video on how to use some of Windows' very powerful systems on resource monitoring and the performance on a machine. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video please visit me at www.frytechit.com.